frankly, there's a huge game on Sunday. And it's Sunday night, and it's probably, I mean, it's Pats, it's Pats, it's Bucks at Pats. It's Tom Brady against Bill Belichick for the first time since Tom Brady in, in Tom Brady's career because he's always played for the Pats. He is now going back to Foxborough for the first time since he left and won a Super Bowl in Tampa Bay. And it's on Sunday Night Football. And frankly, Breach, I don't know that we can overplay this. Like it's, it's, it's going to be the only thing anybody talks about for a week. I was asked about it last week on Boston radio, because that's all anybody wants to talk about. And it's going to be like the promo that they ran on Sunday night football this week, which in the, it was like, dun, dun, dun. It was like clips of like Brady being serious and like grinning slyly and Belichick looking mad, making like faces like somebody had pissed him off pretty badly. And then it's like the return Brady at Belichick. It was a really good promo that wasn't that deep voice, but, um, you know, that's how it goes. And uh, the Bucks, they are minus five and a half, a five and a half point favorite in Belichick's household with an over under a 49. What's your initial thoughts on this game? My initial thought is that you being asked about this last week, Britson, I got asked about this game in July. Sure, I yeah. mean, that's how much hype is here in this showdown between Tom Brady and Bel- Belichick. You know, here is the funny thing, though, is that they're both coming off losses. It's kind of a, it feels like a must win game for both teams. If you take out the Brady Belichick element, but of course you can't take that out because that's what this whole entire game is about. Uh, You know, I think a lot of people spent uh, the past 12 months after Brady left new England kind of debating who was better for the Patriots. Was it Belichick or was it Brady? And then Brady took a big step ahead in that argument when he won the Super Bowl, And I think he can end it for good if he beats the Patriots on Sunday. And so my feeling on this game is that this is, I think it, it it might not seem like, but I feel like it's a bigger game for Brady. He's the dumped girlfriend here. The Patriots decided they didn't want him. They let him walk because they thought they would be better off without him. Now he's got a Super Bowl ring and he can put that Super Bowl ring on his middle finger. Uh, No, he's not going to do that. Um, but <laughs> you put know, all he, stacks, all like seven of them. Just <laughs> exactly. I feel like he is going to be absolutely motivated. I think the Buccaneers are the better team on paper. Mac Jones has struggled against good defenses. Uh, not that the Buccaneers have been a great defense this year. And I think, uh, I, I like Tampa Bay to win and cover in this game. Yeah. I mean, both teams are coming off a loss in week three, which you know, surprising because, you know, we thought the Bucs might uh, be able to go into the and play the Rams and, and really beat up on them. But the Rams were able to throw the ball down the field and to, they didn't need to run the ball. They, they, the Rams can do based on their strengths and their weaknesses. They can exploit the Buccaneers defense. I didn't think about that enough when we were looking at this game. That was stupid on, on my part. Um, the Patriots, Their weaknesses and their strengths play right into the hands of the Buccaneers defense. The Buccaneers defense is great against the run and terrible, not terrible, but not great against the pass. They are what people in the DFS community call a pass funnel because of their good interior defensive linemen. They just force you into throwing the ball down the field. Well, that means this is all on Mac Jones to go out there and beat Tom Brady with his arm. Belichick doesn't want to do that. He wants to run the football. I'm sure you heard Belichick's answer when they're like, what did you see on those two interceptions from Mac? He goes, probably same thing you did. And then like, that was his answer. He wasn't very happy about it. And so if I'm a Patriots fan, I'm worried that we are not going to be able to beat the bucks on the ground and that the defense might not be able to limit Tom Brady enough because Brady, again, not going to be thrown off by the mystique of, of Gillette stadium and playing against Bill Belichick. You know, he's, 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 he's pretty comfortable in Gillette Stadium. He's won a bunch of games there. He's not going to be freaked out. by Half the fans are going to be cheering for him for crying out loud. So, I mean, I, I don't, I just don't see a way in which the Patriots win this game against Tom Brady in vengeance mode, coming off a loss, going to play Bill Belichick. Unless Bill Belichick just knows how to scheme up against Tom Brady specifically. Yeah, I think that is the one kind of twist here is that, look, Belichick was with Brady for 20 years. He knows every single weakness Brady has. He's going to develop some sort of defensive game plan to exploit those, but Brady's going to know he's going to do that. So the the Buccaneers will come up with an offensive game plan to not let him do that. This is like 4D chess that you always talk about, Brinson. Um, But I I think 4D chess. You are an expert at 4D chess. You're you're probably the Gary Kasparov 4D chess players. I don't know why I know any chess player names, but yeah. So I think Brady is going to win this game of 40 chess. And you know what? 
if Jameis Winston can go into Gillette Stadium and pick up a win, I feel pretty good about picking Tom Brady to do the same thing. Yeah, so I would be taking the, the Bucks here, even though it'll be the chalky public side. Um, it, I don't love doing it, but I just I am I, the, the Pats don't look great. I think the under might be the better play though, if you're picking something because the Patriots will not want to turn this into a shootout. And we saw, even though the Patriots scored third, I mean, the, the, excuse me, the Buccaneers and Tom Brady scored 30 straight points in, in nine straight games until Sunday when they only scored 24 against the Rams. You know, they're they they can put up points, but they're also willing to get in sort of a lower scoring affair. I don't think they'll want to. I don't think they'll want to embarrass Belichick. Right, like I don't think they would want to run the uh, maybe, maybe. If Tom Brady can win this game forty nine to seven, he is going to say, "Bruce Arians, let's win this game forty nine to 7. All right, fair enough. Uh, Bill Belichick. I think we have like a separate like research doc on the uh, on <laughs> Belichick. Obviously, the most wins all time, including playoffs by a quarterback coach duo, two hundred forty nine. Next closest, Drew Brees and Sean Payton, who no longer exist together, one forty four. Then Big Ben, and Mike Tomlin, one thirty six, and they're basically at the end of it. Uh, you have, of course, first notable great quarterbacks. Their first game against their old team. Ken Stabler, 1980, lost to the Raiders. He was playing with the Oilers. Joe Montana beat the 49ers in 1994. Kurt Warner with the Cardinals lost to the Rams. Well, I guess Kurt Warner had gone to the Giants, so I'm not sure that that works. Brett Favre uh, famously beat the Packers in 2009. Peyton Manning lost to the Colts in Andrew Luck. What will happen with Tom Brady? We will find out. 